to deny England the ball. Well, the two captains are leading their teams out now onto this splendid Kings Park arena. Not quite full, the capacity is 51,000, but they're making up for that in the noise they're using to greet the England team as they come out onto the field. We'll hand you over to our match commentators, Steve Smith and John Taylor. Well, an amazing day here in Devon. The weather has completely changed. They've been training in very high temperatures, high humidity. It's dry again now, but we even had rain a few moments ago. A cool breeze, a temperature down in the low 60s. And really, conditions, apart from the wet ball in the early stages, Steve, just about as perfect as England could hope for here. I would think so, John. It's like a summer's day in Leeds. The humidity's gone, the heat's gone, and this should really suit the England boys. Jerry Gascott restored to his best form, nice and relaxed, perhaps uh, waving up to the stands to his wife, because one of the things that's happened in the last few days is that the wives and uh, children have come out to join the players. But his back to us there, turn around Jim, that's Jim Fleming from Scotland. The man who refereed the very first game in the last World Cup and set the whole tone for the way things were going. Ken McCartney is one touch judge and Mr. Hahn from Korea the other. Well, Carling looking pensive, but he was very relaxed when I spoke to him earlier, feeling that the preparations really couldn't have gone better. They've trained so much harder than they were able to last year because of the preparations they were able to complete before they even came out here. Just the sort of delay that um, the players don't like before the anthems come up. Plenty of English flags and cheers all around the stadium. Everybody's been arriving here for the competition in the last couple of days. 
and the England team there they basically opted for the Grand Slam winning 15 but there are two changes the first at scrum half where Dewey Morris gets his first World Cup game after sitting on the bench all the way through the 1991 tournament the reason given is that he's super fit and raring to go while Kieran Bratton hasn't played since the Kolkata Cup match in March the other change has been forced by Dean Richards hamstring injury which is nearly but not quite right yet And Argentina have been forced to reshuffle their backs after an injury yesterday to centre Francisco Garcia. The very experienced Diego Cuesta Silva moves in from the wing to partner captain Sebastian Salvat. And Diego Albanese comes in on the left wing. And the forwards they have a very powerful front five with Federico Mendes, the prop who was sent off at Twickenham in 1990 at Hooker. But in the back row they'll be heavily outweighed. They've got two 15 and a half stoners on the flanks. And Jose Santa Marina, the number eight, is only just over 14 stone. The key man looks smiling and looking relaxed. That's Rob Andrew. It's important that he gets his kicking right. Serious faces in the England huddle. Jerry Gus got a final little bit of warming up. We're ready to go, it seems. The last time these two sides met was at Twickenham in 1990, an eventful match in every way, and England won it 51-0. They'd love to get off to that sort of start today. And Rob Andrew gets the game underway. England's ball, a little knock on there from the kickoff. Joey Morris, seeing some World Cup action at last. He's such a great competitor. He's already announced that he'll be retiring from rugby after this World Cup. He's finished as captain of Oral, so the last thing he wanted was to sit this one out and he'll be giving it everything because he knows that this could be his last game well, Andrew hoists it high testing one out to the right wing Martin Terran and a knock forward by England that time interesting first scrum though John because Argentina have put a lot of heavyweights in that front five and the England scrum didn't budge just go for this big push on their own put in the bajado or the bajadita as they sometimes call it there's Mendes in the middle there he was a schoolboy when he propped at Twickenham and got sent off for um, hitting Paul Ackford who's sitting down in front of me rubbing his chin at the moment little tricks L but he feeds the scrum crookedly, and Dewey Morris is quick to get it away. Clark trying to make the first impact. Back to Morris. Andrew with the drop kick. It went wide. And it was not given. It went over. But it was not given because it was from a free kick. And it has to... The, the, the play... Watch this. It goes straight back. And there had not been a stoppage in play, so that is not allowed. Jim Fleming right on the ball. Yes, the referee was quite right. There's got to be the ball has got to be took by the opposition before they can allow a drop goal. And Rob Andrews saw one sail over there, but unfortunately that one doesn't count. I think they automatically assume that by the time they've set up a ruck and gone again that everything's okay but uh, it was quite right Victor Ubogu getting through there putting the pressure on England knocking on though and Argentina have to put in 
We're going back to the disallowed drop goal, John. What we saw there was Ben Clark driving forward over the game line, and what's, that's what the England back row have got to do time and time again in this game. Rory Underwood had uh, dropped that well to cover that one, and his kick turns out to be a good one. Getting through and past Gerardo. talking since he's got out there he's just trying to uh, make sure that he's got control of this game before he lets it flow Tim Rodber off the top back to Bayfield now it comes just at that time being used to set up penalty to England Argentina diving straight over the top yes, that's good refereeing early on we wanted an open flowing game if people get tackled and try and lay the ball back as Gustav did, did so well then and Argentina kill it they should be penalised, and quite rightly they have them. These two countries have met five times officially before. Argentina have one win. And England took that experimental side in 1990. Over and in the second test, uh, Argentina won it 15-13. They drew 19-all in 1981 in Buenos Aires. Now Rob Andrew. With the penalty, pretty straight, but uh, about 36, 37 metres out. Set it high, great kick. That really has set him off, he gave that an almighty thump. Remember, we're down at sea level, so there's no extra ball carry out here. And uh, that was a great kick. Yes, it was, and the drop goal was disallowed, a nice one as well, and he hit that one really sweetly, so it's a good start for Rabandu. Bayfield, not quite gathering it in, but it broke. Look for a moment as if it was fine. Dewey Morris is knocked on, and there's no advantage. I think that was probably a little bit of grease on the pitch after the, the shower of rain that we had. My taxi driver was telling me this is the coldest day in Durban for at least five months. And a penalty against England. And he says that England went down and he turns away from them. He says, don't argue with me, don't even try it. I think Brian Moore was arguing with his eyes then. Six minutes gone. And Argentina have a chance. It was interesting to see who they were going to use as the kicker, and it's Rodrigo Pixel, the little scrum half. Because uh, Maison, the fullback, was the kicker, but he's not in the game, so Pixel made his debut against Ireland in 1990, but he's been very irregular in the side since then, and this is only his eighth cap. So we'll soon find out. Yep, it's a beauty. Oh, and they've thrown a low one to the front. They're not even trying to out jump the England big man. That was chucked in at knee height. Tim Rodber penalised. Instead of coming in from the back of the mall, he came in from the side. 
So Cretel now with another chance. Yes, I think he's a very good referee in by Jim Clay because what he's trying to establish early on in the game is he can't come over the top and you can't come round round the sides and really that should allow us to have quite a fluent game of rugby, which is what we're all looking for. As we see Tim Rubber holding up from the side, and that is illegal. He's got to join in for the back foot. We'll just sharpen everybody up and make sure that they know he's on the ball. So again, this one, if anything more difficult, because it's from his wrong side, and he will curl the ball over this. But he's missed it on the near post, trying to overcompensate for that. And Rory under it, under it again. There was a time a few seasons ago where he really wouldn't have taken that sort of responsibility. So very good to see. Kick. Just a little too long. Rodba smashes through as the catcher lands. Back it comes Patel with the little kick. Haran's after it. Now can England set it up and gain possession? Well, they would have done. But in came. Somebody over the top of the ball. And the offender was Rolando Martin. Andrews kick finds touch safely. Down to the 10 meter line, almost in the Argentine half. Tim is gone, Steve, and not much pattern to it yet. Not really, I think I'm going to find a bit of a handful with this massive Argentinian front five and certainly the scrummaging, John. I think there's a little bit of pressure. Bayfield soars into the sky. At six foot ten, they won't have encountered anybody his size before. There's the ball. Dewey Morris just looking for somebody to come off him, but goes himself in the end. Back it comes. On again they go. That time, Ubogu Clark. It's the sort of role that England want. Now there might be a bit of space. Rob Andrew with the little push through, and a very good position deep in the 22. Yeah, it's good play around from England. That's what they've got to do. Dewey Morris did the right thing there. He sucked him in first of all. Then you get the big roll forward running on and breaking the gain line. Wicked out to the blind side to Rob Andrew, and that's a very good attacking position. Mendes there with the ball, the hooker. And he's, uh, he's now, uh, having been sent off at Twickenham, he's taken up the law as a profession. And Fleming still working very hard at that line out to get everybody right. A lob across, it wasn't straight, and a German nearly picked it up. Ubogu does. Clark can't hold on to Morris's pass. And Jim Fleming taking him right back to the line out because the throw wasn't straight. Ooh, but that was a try. That had gone to hand, and Ben Clark knows it. If he'd gone to hand, Ben Clark, he would have been in. Nobody would have stopped him from two yards out. Pushed by the Argentines. And England. England being penalised. Brian Moore penalised for kicking that ball out of the scrum intentionally because he'd lost it. And I've got to say, John, this is the first time for many years where I've seen the England scrummage in the so much pressure. Three big men, Matias Corral, Federico Mendes and Patricio Noriega. Uh, 16 10, 17 stone, 16 and a half stone respectively. Jason Leonard's big enough at 17 and a half, but Brian Moore's only 14 stone and Victor Ubogu only just 16 stone. A Jomo off the top, Rob Andrew gets it wide to Carling, but it was a, a pass under pressure and a knock on. And, uh, I think 
a hard look from the captain to his outside half there. They're very good mates, but I don't think Will Carling expected that one coming at him. Pushing it straight back to the captain, Seldar, who took in a good uh, kick. And it's so important for the England boys not to give knock-ons away like that, because what they want to try and avoid now, they want to try and avoid scrimmaging. Line-outs are OK, Rooks and Moors they have no problem with, but they've got to put down as few scrums as possible. Bayfield, but in front of him it was uh, Martin Johnson, and Mendes penalised, and then he said something, and he's knocked back another 10 metres. Rob Andrew takes play midway into the Argentine half. Lanas at the front for Argentina. Behind him, Spoleder, who was sent off in the last World Cup. Rodberg gets a hand to it. It's to Dewey Morris. Carling back inside to Victor Ubugu. Almost found the gap. But it's still well set up. Comes wide. Pat holds it on and lays it back. And the penalty against the Argentine because again he didn't regain his feet after the tackle and just dived over. That was Lanes. Spoleda picked up there, the number five. And that uh, punch up uh, for those who remember a Pontefreve. Once again, the referee quite correct. Even though the ball is loose, it's come back from the tackle and you're not allowed to go down the ball. Scrawley, they've got his marching orders with uh, Matt Keenan. Of uh, Western Samoa. The penalty to Rob Andrew, 15 minutes gone. That big concentration, that crouch. Then he hits it, it looks good, it is. Another tremendous strike from Rob Andrew. And England increased their lead to 6 0. 12 months ago on this ground, playing for England against Natal, Rob Andrew couldn't get a goal to save his life. And he's striking the ball sweetly a year later, and we're all very happy about it. Yeah. Looks as if it's going straight out, but. Uh... Oh, the. The flag was up. Ken McCartney, I think, got the flag up before he ever went into touch. Uh, but what Steve Ojomo didn't get was the call, which would have told him that he could have afforded to leave it. Tim Robber. That's a lift. Pedro Svoleda arguing the toss. Come on, boy, come on. Good kick again. Rod Andrew striking the ball really well. Quite clearly a lift. The hands were on the shorts before he'd ever jumped, and he was hoisted. Taken by Ben Clark. But again, the England forwards have made a little bit of a mess of it. And uh, they might have done better to just get in and rut that one back, Steve. Absolutely, it was basic stuff. Ben Clark took the ball well, it went to ground. Should have come back on England's side, but it didn't. So intent on these hit and drive moves at the start of the game in particular to wear out the opposition. That was Steve Ajemo trying to pick it up and he did done far better to have just gone straight past the ball. That's what is Pernal there with the little goatee beard. Nice little move there from Abizu. Getting past the first defender. England have 
have it though, they've turned it around in the run. This one goes to England because in fact it never became a rut. The ball never made the floor. It's a bit of a down old start, John. In all truth, I always thought it was going to be because you've got two very, very heavy packs here slugging it out in the first 20 minutes. I think this is always going to be the way. Ben Clark with a sore ankle, but the real treatment being given there to Rob Andrew. And that is the one injury that England cannot afford on this trip. If Rob Andrew goes down, I think they're really in trouble. England's record point scorer, and they really would have to reshuffle and bring Mike Cat up to outside half with John Callard coming in to do the goal kicking at fullback if he were to be set out of the tournament. And Victor Adobu looking under a bit of pressure. Here's the territory in possession in England's favour, just that everybody sorting out. Dogo did well to stay up there. Cleared by Morris to Andrew. And they'll be much happier when it's a line-out, Steve. They certainly really did very well there by Morris. The ball spurted out of the back because once again, the England scrum looking very uncomfortable. They feel with it. And now England, I'm sure, will try and get something moving off this one. Get one of those rolling balls going and try and explode off it. They've got some real momentum. Brian Moore in the middle of that one. But they've messed it up again at the end, so they've given away the putting. Absolutely, and then once again, it's the last thing they want because this is another scrimmage that's going to be Argentina's putting. They really must clear these balls away from the rooks and the malls. On goes the push. Again, really no attempt to hook it. They just try and drive straight past the ball. Andrew tries to charge down Ardizou's kick. Mike Kent takes it well, but they're through on him. It's Gerardo up on him very quickly. Little Turan in there too. Carling, superb kick from him too. The England captain getting it back to touch on the 10-meter line. Yes, and off played Mike Cat. That was a good kick, and Mike Cat took it well. They've been telling me all year he's a bit suspect from the high ball in the Five Nations, but I've not seen it yet. Yes, there seems to be this sort of misapprehension that he's really a fly half centre playing out of position to fullback. He's adamant that he's actually a fullback who went to fly half and centre just to help out the club, and he played all his schoolboy rugby back at fullback. Rodler got a hand in there at the front. No, no, not forward. Roger again, but he can't hold on to it. That ball is obviously very greasy. Nice little kick. Oh, he was unlucky. Now Bizu looking for the corner, and he so nearly got it. The excuse for England, of course, would be, John, but it is a little bit greasy out there. But I think we play two-thirds of our rugby in this weather, don't we? drop out England getting there and they're able to knock it back Germo setting it up they got to Mendez out of the back of the ruck but there was no advantage he was offside and the referee looking for advantage first but then giving them the penalty England now with the line out throw on the 10 meter line. It's certainly not Jim Fleming's fault the game's not flowing as far as I can see. John, it seems to be the England boys are just going in that yard too far. The ball's getting locked and stuck, and people are coming over the top and round the side. They really should try and release it, I think, a little bit earlier. 22 minutes gone, so we're just over a quarter of the way through. England come up with it through Ben Clark back time Andrew hoists the high one it's long can the fullback take it 
He did, but he couldn't mark it. He had to get off the ground. And England piling through there. He didn't have a chance to move, so... Jim Fleming rightly gives them the foot in the strike. But that was better. Nice kick from Rabandri. But the ball came from the rook a lot quicker, basically, because Ben Clark released it quicker. They're trying to pressure Arbizu, but he gets his kick away well. But at the moment, there's sort of polite appreciation of this game from the the crowd around. They've got about 30,000 here, this wonderfully revamped stadium. The stand there underneath at the moment on the far side has had a whole new top foot on it. And the capacity of the ground has gone up to 51,000. Rudba, it was an outside arm, yes. Tim Fleming spotted it. Facing mistakes from very, very good players. And, you know, I think England have started pretty poorly, really. They've really got to get back to their discipline and their fluent game that we're so used to seeing them playing. Abizu putting it downfield. He had to. He couldn't go over touch. Mike Kent gathers it in safely. And he can because he is inside the 22. Not quite. It was a good kick. There into the wide open spaces, back goes Steve Ajemo, and there's a really rustic number eight kick. <laughs> no pretense at any sort of torpedo angle, spinning the ball. That was just I'm getting that into touch and safety. That's a number eight kick, it was a screw kick, but he was spinning end over end. Fifteen minutes to go to half time. The ball didn't go in five metres as they try to get things moving quickly. Clark to Rodba. He makes a bit of ground. Now he sets it up, rolling over. There's a bit of space out there now if they can get it going. Well done by Rory Underwood to keep that alive. But England again getting crowded down. And the handle is not good enough. Argentina come up with it. They had an overload, lap, but they kicked instead. Tony Underwood. And the net loss to England of something like 40 metres. Yes, that was a pity because once again the back row in coordination, the ball came back nice and quickly, England hit the blind side, and we actually had a little overlap over there, but they've wasted unfortunately. Steve Germo in trouble. Kevin yeah. Murphy has it. Quick feel around the river area and says get on with it. It's going to hurt a bit, but there's nothing wrong. Last one off the back for Argentina. But it was a knock on. England have the advantage, so play continues. Much more solid scrum from England. Rob Andrew with the kick. He hasn't found touch. Gerardo. He hoists it to my cat. Oh, Mark it. Yes, the sad thing is that when Argentina do get the ball, they actually show no ambition at all, apart from just kicking it back to England. Well, it does seem to be the problem with Argentine rugby, really ever since Hugo Porter left the scene. Part of this who took over from Porter. But was then really sort of out of favour for a while. They've had several tries with different people in there. Now they do back in. Throw wasn't straight, the one 
aspect of hooking play that Mendez certainly hasn't mastered is throwing into the lineout. To the words right out of my mouth, John. I was about to say it's all right from the big gloves in there for the scrummaging, but when it comes to line outs, of course, he can't throw it in. England now confident enough to move Ojomo over to the side. Dewey Morris hoists it high, a bit too high, hasn't quite got enough length on it, but it bounces off his head, no knock on. No knock on, but it was an Argentine who was in front of his player. England opting for the penalty, they could have had a scrum from where the, the knock forward was. Spoiled six minutes after half an hour, John, getting a bit spoiled in this tournament, aren't we? It's not 50 points by half time, we're all a bit upset now. Well, I think it is a bit sad because what one would have liked to see England do in this tournament is get off to a flying start and really impose themselves on the game and take control, and they haven't done that yet. Twenty-nine minutes gone. Rob Andrew crouches into that free start, lets it go again and again, it looks good, it is tremendous kick from Rob Andrew, and as so often, he's the man who's leading England towards comparative safety. Yeah, he's carrying on from the Grand Slam game against Scotland, Rob, he's really in the groove there, and he's striking the ball so sweetly. Johnson under it, but a, an Argentine hand first. Mendes came up with it and sets up Martin. Now they're getting a bit of hit and go going themselves. Bit of space here, the other flanker now. Rodba brings down Viel. Abizu looks for the drop goal chance, and he's pushed it wide. Well, once again he had men outside and there was an overlap on there he should have moved it to the left but he didn't he went for the drop goal here it is overlap on the left he ignored it and that's a bad miss good solid take from the 22 dropout round it comes Martin again, trying to get it away, gets it back to the scrum half. They've got an overlap here again, releasing Albanese, the left winger who came in and Mike kept it very well. Just to keep his eyes firmly on the ball and put that one away. Yeah, but that's better, that's number one to Argentina. When I mean, they get this quick look and more ball, they need to spin it wide like they did then. And when they do it, John, they actually look quite dangerous. the ball before he throws it in shows you that there's never going to be any accuracy it just laid there on the palm of his hand Abizu doing well to get outside Ben Clark oh and there's space here on the blind side they've got to look inside to set it up remember it's Santa Marina setting up the, the run it comes again Noriega being used, now they're going to move it wide. This is Martin. Little spill of the ball, but England have it, so Jim Fleming plays the advantage and Rob Andrew puts in a great touch finder. And England go away to safety. Yes, yeah, so that was very good England defence, but it was also very good England discipline because it would have been so easy there to try and kill the rook of the mall and give away three points. Good defence and good discipline by England. Very few problems there, but they won't be worrying the big size at the moment with their potential for attack, will they, Steve? Oh no, it's the opening game, there's a few nerves, they're not quite, they're certainly not smoothly into their rhythm like they were when they left the shores. And Steve Ajomo is penalised there for moving into the middle of the line-out when the referee's been very intent on keeping a big gap down the middle. Kick bounces just right in the end for Mike Caddy. Did well to just relax and wait for him. Puts away the touchdown. 
once again, Arbizu had people over on the right, he ignored them, and really that's playing straight down England's hand because if England don't mind line outs all afternoon. Steve Ajoma has a cut. He's got to come off and get it fixed. And Neil Beck quickly getting his uh, track feet off because England are allowed to replace him temporarily. back just waiting now he's stripped off he's waiting for the chance to get on working around the fringes yes and again setting up Martin but he loses possession on the tackle England have an advantage but uh, it was also untidy they eventually knocked on so it will be a scrum to England well, both sides are good to really a very scrappy play. Neil Back comes racing on for his third cap. Even though he's only on probably for five minutes, it counts as a cap. And he'll be very anxious to make an impression. As you can see on this near side, but the referee decides that nobody was to blame on that occasion. Matthias Corral, the loose head. Looks quite a handful. Dewey Morris forcing his way through. Such a strong scrum half. And oh, getting a bit of movement going. Here it comes, Rob Andrew. Not really the pass he wanted, so he was forced to backtrack. to Gerardo who made the little jink and got away the touch kick in the crowd with a big chair they like to see anybody on the England side made a monkey out Steve Ajamo nearly ready for return 35 minutes gone in the first half England really need a try don't they Ben Clark through the middle, but a good tackle again. Neil back very quickly there, as you'd expect. And he's got it. That's what they wanted. Now there's some space. They got men there too, but Jerry Gus got cuts inside. There was offside though already from the ruck. Crowd don't like it, but Jim Fleming had no hesitation. It's a shame though, because there's certainly no up there. Jaden moved it wide. I think he'd have found a two to one outside him. Well, that's what England want to do, and of course Neil Back's been on the field only a couple of minutes, but he's made his presence felt. He was there at the breakdown. England won the quick look and more ball, and the blind side was wide open. And while they're preparing for the penalty, back comes off, and Ojomo goes back on. Big tackle on Jerry Guscott. He should have shifted out earlier, but of course Jim Fleming said the Argentinians encroached offside. Gone. Andrew with the kick. Kick three already, that one's there too. As soon as he hit it, casually bent down to pick up his kicking tee. He has to look at it any further. It's been a hard evening for those forwards. And Rob Andrew has repaid them every time he's kicked it. Abazu, <laughs> good drop out. Well taken there by Steve Ajoma, who's now not got a number on the back of his shirt. They've insisted he changes that, so there's no blood around. Just nowadays, they have a full set of shirts, sub-shirts and blood shirts. It looks as if uh, we've got a bang on the nose. There's a cotton wool plug there. Wild sweep by Martin Bayfield to get for that one. I think he was just knocked off balance at the height of his jump, but well recovered by Dewey Morris. Back from Tony Underwood, acting scrum half. 
Gerardo takes it. Left footed. Mike Cat waiting for it to come into the 22. And England uh, just content at the moment to put it back, but he missed his touch. And he missed his man. Now Argentina with a chance to set something up. We've got a bit of a broken field. The referee in the way. Still well set up. Yell. Abizu. Had to be obstruction, but the referee didn't see it. The man ran a dummy there. Martin Johnson comes over to clean up and hopefully set the ball up for England. Joey Morris is there, looking for it, he's found it. Back to Rob Andrew. And a good touch. And Mike Jack looking pensive because he knows he caused that moment of panic. There you can see him acknowledging it. again for moving into the middle of the line out before the ball comes in they're not allowed any stepping these days that's uh, one of the things that the referees have been told to concentrate on and he wants them still good touch Argentina as we go into the final seconds of the half set themselves up in the 22 throw in in their own 22 or this would be more dangerous 40 minutes is gone picked up by Clark he drives away but again the ball comes loose again the touch is missed this is Albanese but his kick causing no problems at all, much too deep and the half-time whistle goes a disappointing half then for England but four Rob Andrew penalties taking them away and they lead 12 points to nil Welcome back to Kings Park Durban England leading Argentina by 12 points to nil but I can tell you that up here in the stands there's several disgruntled fans are disappointed by England's lack of adventure Four Rob Andrew penalties, all they have to show for the first half in which nobody really gained any continuity. A very slippery ball, perhaps an excuse, but certainly those watching big sides, the Australians, the South Africans and New Zealanders, won't have anything to worry about at the moment. And as the second half is about to, be, about to begin, referee Jim Fleming are checking that both sides are ready. Let me hand you back to your commentator, John Taylor. And Jim Fleming kicks off. Joey Morris. Tony Underwood getting there, but he couldn't get the touchback that he needed. Now Rob Andrew, he's going to kick it, but now England have got runners. Cut coming through wide. And uh, Karan is actually very quick indeed. He turned on the pace there at the end, seeing the danger, but England immediately with a good, good position down on the Argentine line. If he wanted to start a very clever kick by Rob Andrew because he saw that Gerardo, the Argentinian fullback, came up in the line defensively and he chipped over the top where there was acres of space. And England not getting the clean one they wanted, but Martin Johnson gathering it in and they try and work it, but there was a little tap forward. One time they wanted a good ball, Steve. Yeah, as you'd expect the old machine to start rolling there, wouldn't you? Ball to Bayfield, caught down, roll over, but it's just not going their way tonight. Put away 
to touch beautifully by Arbizu. Brian Moore now with the throw in. He missed his man on the last line out. Morris to Andrew, back inside. That's a beautiful run by Rory Underwood. Taken from behind, but they've got to keep it going now. This is where they don't want too much fancy. Way to Rory Underwood, but Gasket drops the pass. And it's all just a bit too frantic. It was all set up then. And now Argentina working it wide. They've got the overlap. Clark, that catches man. But Jerry can't believe it. Two balls he's had, one he's dropped, and one he's missed an overlap. Well, the comment at half time from Jack Rowell was he's very unhappy about the lack of continuity that England have achieved. He thinks they're looking very rusty indeed, and he says, as we all know, that once again, Rob Andrew has caught them in the game. Ojomo getting something going for Abugo. Dewey Morris, Rob Andrew, there's the drop goal straight through the middle. And 15 points to England, 15 points to Rob Andrew. Three minutes gone. Great drop goal from Rob, but really it was made easy by his forwards. One, two or three runs from the trot. Nice serve from Dowie Morris, nobody near him, and Rob Andrew doesn't miss those. Abizu dropping out again. Rodder underneath it. Gets a touch. Carling in to clean it up. They're trying to turn him over. And they have done. Penalty. There was an English hand in there trying to stop that ball coming out. Well, that's something you don't see very often as well, John. Will Carling going in with the ball defensively, superbly. And this time, somehow, he seemed to let it go. Took a bang for his pains. The penalty chance. Argentina. Change of kicker. Arbizu taking over. And between the posts it goes. The fly half taking over the kicking duties. From Texel, who missed uh, with a couple earlier. So, five minutes gone in the second half, and Argentina posts the first point. Penalty from Arbizu. England 15, Argentina 3. Small leader and... Lanes uh, getting in each other's way of shade there. Arbizu looking very composed. He's had a good game, the Argentinian number 10, Steve. Yes, he's kicked very well. The one criticism would be, John, is that he's ignored overlaps outside him. But to be fair, I would think uh, most players on the pitch have done that this evening. Ball with the throw. Back to Ojomo again, off the top. Dewey Morris did well to rescue that. Carling now, trying to get some ground through the middle. Well, Jomo's down on the ground, having taken that line-out ball, he pulls himself to his feet now. Back it comes to Rob Andrew, who's going fourth position, deep to the corner. But that's going to go dead. Not quite. He's got to pick it up and find touch, but he does so well. Carling again on the floor, receiving treatment. The 
from the England captain. He's had a rough old three or four minutes. Yes, he has. <laughs> About the Argentinians, they've not been shy in the tackle. I mean, they've really put some big hits in. And of course, when you're trying to drive forward and set up the ball over the game line, nothing stops you better than a great big tackle from the opposition. And the England forwards getting themselves into a huddle, trying to sort of work out exactly what's going on. There's Will, climbing into some traffic. Some big hits going in on the captain. And it looks as though he was stood on accidentally by one of his own men. Yes, I think that was Victor Ubogu's boot that probably did the most damage. Thank you, Victor. Called the Glanville there. Just uh, warming up. Darling, I think saw, but no structural damage. Fifteen three England lead and we haven't seen we haven't seen a try yet as Ojomo is sent off again. He's gotta come and they'll make him change his shirt. So he's gotta come off. There's no point in Kevin Murphy trying to treat him on the field. Gary Morris getting core ball off the top, but rescued for Jason Leonard. That's a good drive from the loose head prop. That's a better ball. They can use that one. Gasket though doesn't get the run, the timed run from Ubogu that he wanted. Ubogu there ready to explode off the side if the ball comes back to him. Rodback coming away with it. Morris setting up Bayfield. Now they've got space, now they ought to be able to move it, but they're going back inside, onto Clark, Carling. Just to lay it back, the support was a bit slow, they've got it though. Clark sets up again. He has the penalty, you can see it was set up beautifully, but somebody deliberately went over the top to make sure that England didn't get the quick heel they were looking for. Yes, that's why that Neil Max come on, perhaps he will help the fluency. But certainly at the moment, John, they're finding it very hard to get the ball back from these rooks and balls at any kind of pace, which is the sort of ball that really the backs need. And England's still not safe, so although there's a few jeers from the crowd, you can't blame Rob Andrew for going for the penalty. Now there we see it. Ben Clark laid the ball back really well there, but the Argentinians coming in for an offside and killing it. Rob Andrew with a tremendous kicking performance so far. Coming up to ten minutes gone in the second half. It's now distinctive style. Through it goes again. He really is hitting the ball with enormous authority. High and straight through the middle. 18-3 to England. And 18-3 to Rob Andrew. Yes, it is. You really thought the Argentinians would have learnt the lesson by now, wouldn't you? But they keep giving Rob penalties and he keeps sticking them over. Again, the big Argentinian forwards getting in the way to stop England coming up with the ball from the kickoff. They did well and they've got a position deep in the England 22. Steve Jomo there on his third shirt. Jack Rowell looking anxiously. I think he's probably come down so that Steve can take some instructions onto the field with him. He's still got a plug of cotton wool up his nose, but if the bleeding hasn't stopped, then he could be off again. Johnson, the bank official in these a banker for England these days to win line-out ball at the front. Gerardo tries to go outside, there wasn't any room there, so now they work it back and they've got space, and really Arvizu should have let it go earlier. Good attack, but they played into the England cover's hands. Now it's free. Mendes. 
Udogu's not letting him go past. The other big drop for loose head this time, Ferrari. Now they've got an overlap, but in there goes Tim Rodback. They pointed forward, he's playing advantage, he's already given a penalty for offside against England. So this is all free ball. No advantage, he let the play go on for 30 seconds, there was offside, and now Jim Fleming gives the penalty. Yes, he's given Tim, Tim Rubber offside, but... Uh... I would think Rodbury would settle for that because there's about a 3 to 1 overlap and Tink came in, hit the bloke man and ball, and he's given the penalty away rather than the possible seven points. Back comes Steve Ajomo, and off again comes Neil Van. Well, a very spirited performance so far in the second half from Argentina, Steve. Uh, I know that the, the spread betting forecast was that. England will win by 25 to 30 points. Well, I must admit, John, I always thought that was a bit generous. I always thought it's going to be a very, very difficult game. The Argentinians got a very, very big pack, and they, they play a very conservative game. Arbizu hits the post, and it comes back. It's not clear yet. Park sets it up. He did well there. Over the top, England have gone there, so they've given away another penalty. I thought Ben Clark had kept his head well. Instead of trying to get in a pass that might have been so much under pressure that it went to ground, he, uh, instead of that, set the ball up. Now Argentina are deciding this time they'll go. Well, a total miss there. The Argentina forward's going in the run and trying to drive England over. It's really got to be, I think it worked, a fly to Argentina. Well, I think that was almost a flying wedge, which has been outlawed, but uh, Jim Fleming's happy, and the man who's claiming the try is Parao, or is it the other one? No, it's Noriega, the tight head prop, Patricio Noriega. And good tactics by Argentina, they tried the easy penalty goal and missed, and this time... The flying wedge came forward, very, very difficult to stop, and as you say, John, I'm not quite sure whether it's legal, but he's given it. Well, I suppose they would argue that they weren't actually bound into contact with the man who received the ball, and that's what makes the difference, but it's really the same thing. That's yes, what well, the definition of the wedge. And Arbizu held in the kick. And suddenly Argentina right back into this game. England 18, Argentina 10. Andrew with the restart. It's a good one right onto the 22. He tried to mark it, but he was outside. That try is certainly on this game, and let's hope it will shock the England lads into putting in some kind of performance, because at the moment we haven't seen one. The one thing they were determined to do in this World Cup was, as Jack Ralph put it, hit the ground running. They took a couple of weeks to get going on their tour over here last year. They thought they were ready for something much bigger. But now Argentina have all the momentum. Martin getting out wide to support. Clark gets out to make the tackle. Argentina have the scrum. Big plug of cotton wool. Suffolk the bleeding at the moment for Steve Germo. England have had all the territory this half, as you can see, and most of the possession. But uh, they've been outscored. Yes, they have. Argentina have the only try, and you can just see how it's lifted them. They ran that ball straight away from the kickoff, and suddenly England have now got the hands full. 
Abizu. Mike Chow. Now still opting for safety. But he misses the touch. Gerardo. And he's just content to hit it long. Totally misjudged. And the number 11, Albanese, is in trouble with referee Jim Fleming. I can hear what they're saying. I've got a link into uh, Jim Fleming's microphone, and uh, Albanese claiming that he stopped 10 metres short. The laws have changed. He's not allowed to go towards the player at all until he's been put on side. And Jim Fleming told him it was very best Scottish. Under pressure, interception. Chip and run from the scrum half. But uh, Tony Underwood's recovered and gets it away to touch. 22 dropout. They're into every trick at the moment, the Argentinians. Prexel trying to claim that that was in play when Underwood put it dead, but uh, it was clearly over the line. And Steve Ajomo, what an error that was in the number eight. Dowie Morris had no chance. Steve had to keep all there because the scrum half has stood between him and Dowie. And that could have been a very, very important interception. Good take this time by Johnson, plowing through and coming up with the ball. Dowie Morris, from Andrew trying to attack the blind side. But again, there's not people there. Hands in the ruck, the original ruck, so a penalty to England. They couldn't get any advantage out of it. But again, they're not looking impressive, Steve. It's all too frantic. They're not setting things up well. It is, you're going back to the situation again, really, where the rooks and moles have been so stymied that the ball isn't coming back quickly. If it doesn't come back quickly, you'll find that all the room outside closed down, and that's just what happened there with Rob Andrew. He looked to the right, nothing was done, he came to the blind side and found that block too. And the one thing that England normally need at this stage of a game that's not going well for them is a big man at number eight with blonde hair to actually start pulling things together, and that's the one thing they haven't got this time. Dean Richards sitting this one out I think would have slowed things down and set the ball up a lot more slowly Rod though with the off the top Rory Underwood trying to come in again this time though he's taken by Martin and they got the ball away as well and another turnover Argentina have it Gerardo Carling drags him down there's a knock on from Argentina and England have the scrum. It's just quite incredible watching this England perform because all the things they're so good at and have been back home over the whole year just hasn't been happening for them. All you saw then was Rory Underwood go into a tackle situation. England's ball retention is normally magnificent. And once again, the ball's turned over to Rook in the mall. I just can't believe I'm seeing it. Back it comes, the scrum half creeping round. Reset it because there's a knee on the ground. Sets up Tony Underwood that time. He wriggles free. Dowie Morris down. Tony Underwood again. And the last pass to Steve Ojomo doesn't go to hand. It was nearly a superb move, but that's really been the story of today. Great play down the blind side, but why didn't Tony pin his ear back if he's only five yards out? I'm sure he could have gone with his strength and pace. So another Argentine strong. Midway through the second half, three quarters of the game gone, and uh, you just feel that might have set England alight if they scored there. circular motion that uh, Jim Fleming is making is indicating that the front rows had turned through 90 degrees so the scrum has to be reset. Yes, it, that is the most ridiculous law on the statute look at the moment. Charge down there and 
didn't bounce right. Rob Andrew didn't know where it was. Having got his hands to it, he carried on running, hoping that it was going to suddenly appear out of the sky in front of him. But instead, it's gone into touch, and uh, Argentina had to throw in. But England certainly have a chance with this. Wouldn't surprise me if Mendes doesn't chance the throw in at the top at all. But Argentina come up with it. Dummying from the ball, that's allowed. From the set scrum, it's not. And they clear it, 2-22. to 22. Martin Bayfield, Tim Rodber behind him, Steve Ojomo behind him. Bayfield it is. Big drive, now they've got that one cleanly. They've got it quickly too. Dowie Morris makes the break. Now he needs support. They're trying to get in and stop the ball coming. And a little knock forward by Argentina, but the support wasn't there, Steve. Well, but I must say, Dowie Morris has had a great game as far as I can see. He's sat on the bench all year and watched Kieran Bracken get a load of perfect ball. Poor old Dowie's coming for this one. I'd have to deal with the stuff he's had to deal with, but I think he's had a terrific match. Enormously strong and looking very sharp and quick too. I understand he's been training with the, the Wigan lads, the Wigan rugby league side at the local gym. England getting a little bit of movement on there. Trying to get Argentina going backwards. Messed it up at the end. It's been typical of today. Big tackle from Rory Underwood. Chose his man perfectly. Jerry Guskin has it. Dowie Morris. Now, can he find support when he needs it to set this one up? Back it comes to Will Carling at Scrum Half. Rob Andrew, and he's going for another drop goal. He can't miss anything today. He's got it. Wonderful kick, he had lots of time, but he had to strike that one really well. And the cheers go up for the kick, and Rob Andrew yet again takes his tally for England, past 20 points in the match. But you have to say that too smacked of a certain lack of ambition. Well, but it was a beautiful kick, and you've got to remember Will Collins at scrum half, so it's not the normal service he's used to either. And that too would, I think, excuse him for going to the drop goal because he knew he hadn't got his captain outside him. He knew he was going to be short on back attackers. Great kick from Rob Andrew. 24 minutes gone in the second half. Ojomo well, setting it up and he didn't get off the ball. And somebody went over the top of it. Brian Moore that time penalised for going over the top. And there was no need, Steve Jomo had the ball, it was controlled, the ball's been back on the England side, so why Brian Moore went to ground, I'll never know. So Arbizu steps up again. Relatively simple penalty, just outside the 22. Sneaked it inside the post. So Rob Andrews drop goal immediately returned. And Argentina. Back there, 21 13. That caption was wrong. 21 13 the score. quick kick off and the ball going dead so that means they are under the new law they come all the way back to halfway and the Argentines there penalized for actually pushing up deliberately you've got to stay absolutely straight in fact sorry England penalized I thought he'd given it to England from the way he said it but he England 
standing up and the England front row getting themselves into a little bit of trouble. Here it is, they've got to stay down England. Massive weight coming through from the Argentinian front five. You can see for the first time in a long time that England scrum is under an enormous lot of pressure because they pop up and that is illegal. Brian Moore giving away a second penalty in the space of under two minutes. Now zoo again. And he's pushed that one. Rory Underwood decides this time to let it drop and it goes dead. That was a big mess, if he'd have kicked that one. All we needed then was a converted try and England would have been really in trouble. Yeah, it was certainly right on the edge of his range, but that was the idea to get Argentina into a situation where they needed only one more score. Argentina have got it there under control in the middle of that ball and they've shown themselves to be very powerful. The kick hoisted from Trexel, it's a good one too. Katz could do nothing except take it and go into touch. Jerry Guscott comes up to take it from the centre position. And England get support there this time to make it safe. Rob Andrew, away goes the kick, and that's a better play by England. And there were they been tonight without Rob Andrew, I wonder. 21 points has given them, and touch kicks like that relieve the pressure, because if Argentina score now, I'll tell you, England have got all on to hold this game and win it. They're absolutely with you there, Steve, if Argentina had just kicked all their goals. England would be in trouble. Mendes. Up comes Ojomo with it, sets it up. Well, Jim Fleming saying it was knocked on by England. Martin on the drive, he's a fiery flanker this one. Little chance, a little flick inside, now they've got space. Rory Underwood getting back to intercept the pass. Knocked on by Argentina, but again, once they moved it, Steve, they really stretched England. Absolutely, the main thing is the move came from the fact that England has set the ball up beautifully in the rook by Steve Ajomo, he did his job, suddenly comes in, knocks it forward, gives the ball back to Argentina, and suddenly it opens up on the open side, and Argentina really, really split them in two here. Only good defence by Rory Underwood really saves them. Rory's back there, a good tackle by Jerry Guscott, but that was dangerous. And at the moment, uh, coming off, we have uh, Noriega, the prop is bleeding from a head wound. And they've, uh, they've sneaked on a prop, uh, Jim Fleming stopping it, making sure that everything's okay. But uh, they've got a man on. Down goes the scrum on the, the new side. Jason Leonard does. Andrew gets a second chance and this time makes a safe touch. England still under pressure, 21-13. We're into the last 10 minutes.
good lead that time from the big man Lanas. Martin held on to it at the second attempt, no knock on. And Argentina just getting those quick hits. Number eight, Sabrina. And again they've set it up. This is four later. Good tackle. But a penalty against England. They were killing the ball, says the referee. England faces say they can't believe it, but that matters not. And immediately, the signs of a serious injury on the pitch. We call on the doctor. I should uh, think that is the number eight, uh, Santa Marina. He's okay again. <laughs> and quickly taken by Arvizu. They were waiting for the moment, but it was. Great boost from the crowd, but. For some reason, Jim Fleming has reversed the penalty. In fact, he said penalty at the start. And... Our, SAB, our SABC director almost missed that completely. But the end result is taking the penalty from the wrong place, I think. A scrum to England. Argentina perhaps being just a shade too clever, wanting to try and trying to catch England unawares by going for it when it seemed odds on that they were bound to kick for goal to bring themselves within range. Oh, yes, they certainly should have gone for goal then. They kicked that in England, they were one score ahead in England at all on the last 10 minutes to defend because of the moment. You've got to say Argentina are looking like the better team. And the crowd now certainly mostly behind Argentina. They think that England have been let off the hook because that was a touchdown in the right corner, even though it was an illegal one. And the referee's hand is up again. You're curling around the edge of the ball and coming in from an offside position, says the referee. What about you, Joe? I think I'd look at this flying wedge again, but he's turned it down. He's gone for the penalty, which is probably a wise decision because, like I said before, one penalty goal, and then they are just a score away. And all thoughts England had before of trying to win the game by 20 and 30 points are out of the window. All they're trying to do now is win it. Off the side again, Jim Fleming's been saying it all night. To be fair to Fleming, he's been consistent. England are off the side and killing it, and once again, they've penalised him. And he's wide of the left post, England sigh with relief because it's still two scores that Argentina need. Into the last five minutes on the clock. There'll probably be a little bit of injury time in this half, so probably five minutes plus that England have got to survive and that's the word now survival they're not really looking to burst out and Rob Andrew forced into a hurried kick there yes I think you're right John. I think the tactics have changed now forget about the great performance forget about the three or four tries let's get a win under the belt from the moment Argentina are looking very very strong the referee rightly outlawing the quick throw in because they're using a different ball if the spectators have touched the ball or if a new ball is given from one of the ball boys you cannot take a quick throw in. there the the quick one but it went into touch again it came off Tim Rodber though so it's still an Argentina ball
now moved two steps. Uh, Mendes back towards his own side. Gets it up for Lanes. And the power of the Argentine forwards again coming into play. To set it up, they'll go for the short one. Wailing off. It's Lanas again. Martin, a little dummy that time from Patel. Knock on. Leonard gets it back to Andrew, and Andrew goes for safety. Yes, he's got to now. He's no choice. In an ideal world, they'd have been 20 points up, and he could spread it wide. They could all, they could all try things that they haven't tried before. But at this stage, all that is now out of the window. So where do England go from here, Steve? Assuming they survive, they go straight back to the training pitch tomorrow, and they sort out all the problems that they've seen today. Well taken. Coming round. Vugu who got in there to turn that into good ball for England. Dewey Morris struggling free, gets it away to Martin Bayfield. Martin Johnson there in support. Ben Clark looking for support. Jason Leonard now on the charge. At last the England forwards put something together. And a knock on Selig. And that, I feel, is what's been happening all through the second half. That was an Argentine hand that suddenly pushed that ball away. On several occasions, Jim, Fel Jim Fleming has said that England had knocked it on. But that is what's been going on. And I'm sure we'll find that the England forwards will be saying that afterwards. That every time they tried to set it up, a sneaky hand got in there and pushed it away. Yes, the Rooks and Moors have certainly been very, very difficult to clear the ball away from. But that was a nice bit of play by England, really, for the first time in the game. We saw backs and forwards combine, and they made a fully 50, 60 yards. And I think you're right, John, the Argentinians definitely did get away in the way and kill it. And quite rightly, Rob Andrew is going to come out of this game with 24 points. Well, Andrew, through the middle it goes again. And England go to a little more safety. Wolf piling at the moment, coming towards the touchline being helped off by the England doctor, Terry Crystal and Kevin Murphy. And there's the scoreline, 24-13. England probably safe with, as we go into the last minute, on comes Phil de Glanville to replace the England captain. Martin Bayfield can't hold on to the kickoff. Argentina spread it wide. Look for the gap. I'm trying to keep it going, Jerry Guskett. Well, they've got space again. That was Caresta Silva. No knock on it. He's going to get there. A try for Arbizu. And Argentina score their second try. It's probably too late. Right on 40 minutes. But England now being outscored in this game, two tries to nil. Well, I wonder now how much the regret not going for those goal kicks earlier on, because this was a beautiful try. The Argentine is looking very, very strong with those slick passes. Obviously, with one man to beat, he does it beautifully. And that's two tries to nil. And unfortunately, England are lucky to get nil. Oh, and he's missed the kick as well. 24-18. England lead. And we're into injury time. Here we see it. Argentina is running from deep with plenty of support. Great slip pass in there. Arvizu takes it the second, second attempt. Defence is nowhere. Lovely size there from the outside. And the second try they so richly deserve. Andrew with the dropout. Bayfield just getting a hand on it, and that's the end, says Jim Fleming. Well, you can just tell from looking at the England faces, they're coming off knowing that they have won, but not at all in the way that they wanted to. They're absolutely dejected. 
not the performance that they wanted to get their World Cup off and running. Some of them just waiting straight on the touchline instead of going over to swap shirts with their opponents. They'll do that once they're off the field. Always cheery there, Tony Underwood, but not a good England performance. They've got to go right back to the drawing board. The final score, 24-18.